the dream started in my youth, obviously when I was going back to age 10 at the National Gallery, and then it's always been my dream and desire to pursue it, despite the um, journey of life. But there's always been that determination um, to realise a dream. For many years, it was like the creativity was trapped behind bars. And I said to myself, you fall down so many times, but you've got to pick yourself back up. If there's that thought in your, in your heart, the thing that makes you at peace with yourself, that gives you that love just for doing the thing that you love the most, is supposed to be the thing you're supposed to be doing. Now, I'm not saying things relating to illegal activities, no, but I'm saying things that are genuine, things that are, are true in terms of your gifts and abilities, don't give up on that because sometimes what happens is when you've got a gift, when you've got a talent and you're not using it, you're sitting on it, then you become frustrated and angry and you see others around you doing the very thing that you love doing and you're not doing it, that's a huge frustration. The best thing to do is to at least try doing it rather than not doing anything at all. inspires me is nature because nature for me is the handiwork of God but in terms of artists various artists from Michelangelo Leonardo da Vinci Rembrandt Titian Velasquez uh, Lucien Freud Van Gogh and uh, coming down to my own contemporaries uh, Niamh Shoah and Desmond Horton, and not forgetting Robert Lenkovich, the late Robert Lenkovich. That's been my fascination, inspiration, and passion. Now this portrait is um, a portrait done by a painter by the name of Diego Velasquez, and it was painted in 1600s, uh, and it's a portrait of his companion and uh, good friend, Juan de Pedro. It basically is a painting that hangs in the museum, the Metropolitan Museum of Modern Art, I think in New York. It's been a massive um, inspiration to me in terms of its realization, uh, its painterliness, um, expression. And Velasquez is one of those painters that, you know, he simplifies form. You know, he's such a great modeler of form and flesh tones. And as you can see, very, very rich, hot and cold tones. In a sense, there's a subtle degree of um, monochrome uh, tones, but as yet, it's very, very rich. So he's just been very suggestive of like, just an earlobe hair, and optically your, your eye reads the entire ear there. He doesn't necessarily get into the nitty gritty of details as such. In this portrait, he's just captured it with one huge tone blocks of colour. I'm sure most people are familiar with Leonardo da Vinci and this is a comprehensive body of his uh, work from his linear self-portrait, as you can see here. Um, what I admire about it is the precision, the way he's executed this portrait, the expression in the eyes. What I admire about Leonardo, first and foremost, is him as a uh, complete draftsman in terms of his ability to realize form in such a realistic and lyrical way. This portrait, self-portrait, is a testimony to the way in which he saw quite deeply, more than most people, um, with remarkable uh, vision and accuracy. The nose, the eyes, the mouth, the beard is very meticulously um, realized and he has that distinct diagonal cross-hatching as you can see 
going across the forms here. But again, very sensitive and very delicate. Things like this used to fascinate me because Leonardo was very much interested in nature, in water, wind. Um, and again, he's very skillfully captured the lyrical aspects of hair and uh, it's quite monumental. This particular painting I did in 2006 and it's a painting of canvas trainers. I'm not quite sure um, you know what you'd call them but they look like trainers to me. My idea or the inspiration came from looking at a series of paintings by Van Gogh of his own boots. That's been done and done quite amazingly you know in terms of you know the colours and the textures. But to myself I thought well, let me paint my own shoes and put my own try and put my own personality into them. And this is what I've come up with. So again, I was concerned about how I'm gonna place the two shoes on the canvas, the shoelaces as well. So in a way, the shoelaces remind me of like tendrils on a grapevine. There's shoelaces, but it's the way they're being placed. You've got to kind of try and make something interesting and poetic. Perhaps they, it works. To my eyes, I think I succeeded in creating something quite interesting but uh, who knows? This painting here is entitled The Universal Painter and it depicts the risen statue of Christ, a bronze statue of Christ in that, in that sense, and myself in the mirror. Now the mirror is behind the statue, hence why you get the uh, back view of the statue. It's about the relationship of light, uh, that universal light that disseminates down from the lamp and the ceiling onto myself, the palette, and the entire interior. The concept was a complex one, but as yet it was about, for me personally, um, being grateful for the gift that uh, the creator has given me. I feel as though I've done service to this painting in terms of its idea. As complex as it was, I think I may have succeeded in doing something remarkably uh, well prior to previous paintings that I've done. This painting is entitled The Sower and it's um, a copy of a painting that uh, Van Gogh painted. Here you can see uh, this figure and he represents a farmer and he's got a pouch with seed there. And then you've got the sun, the horizon, the mountains in the distance. You've got uh, lush greenery. In the foreground, you've got this diagonal of a 
olive tree. The hand of the um, sower is open, he's releasing seed. So for me, the idea of the sower is, is the farmer that releases seed, it falls on the ground, in this case it's an earthen ground, and in the fullness of time, the farmer reap a harvest. Another painting with a biblical connotation to it, as we all know, without the presence of sunlight, you know, nothing grows. For me, the painting had to be very, very rich and colorful. And again, when you look at the original by Van Gogh, you'll see, once again, it's quite rich um, in color. In particular, I like the dynamic diagonal that runs across you know, one point of the painting to the other, and then it comes down like this. So there's a lot of um, movement, there's a lot of um, contrast of colors, and um, personally, um, I enjoyed it, and I think it works. sure most people recognize it. It's a painting of sunflowers by Van Gogh. Now Van Gogh is one of those painters, I'm sure most people are familiar again with Van Gogh's story. He was one of the most tortured, suffering artists, I would say. Within the sunflowers, it's his, it's his signature, it's his, it's his symbol. So whenever we think sunflowers, we think Van Gogh. Now this is my interpretation of the paintings, basically a copy of it. What I was trying to learn was, you know, mixing of colors. The fascination for me was the way in which the background, the yellowness of the background, is brighter than the actual sunflower heads themselves and the petals. So everything tonally is keyed down to play on the light of the background, rather like looking at a stained glass window where the uh, light, you know, shines through and connects with the glass and then you've got this array of beautiful colors. Sunflowers actually dying, but then, you know, embedded in the heads of the sunflowers are the seeds. And in a way, I think Van Gogh is trying to tell us about the cycle of life. future okay going forward um, I hope to um, get to that place where I'm able to have a, a practical studio of course that takes finance um, so once that's established then I can begin to work on producing more paintings nevertheless um, I've got this urge and desire to, you know, really produce a lot of work. The, I, there's ideas in me that need to be birthed and, and uh, come forth. And these have been my frustrations over the years. So yes, I haven't painted enough as yet. So I need to paint more. So I need to work more. That's what I'm about.